Hi guys, it's Manvy Miles here and today I really just wanted to check in quickly and talk to you about a few running trends um, from the tech world that I've been picking up on. Um, a lot of new gear in recently to test and we're seeing a whole wide range of different bits and pieces. Um, on my wrist here I've got the Sunto 3 Fitness. Uh, this offers up adaptive fitness training plans that basically learn as you use it essentially. So the idea is that you can strap it on do a couple of sort of calibration tests and then after a while this learns uh, how fit you are and then progresses your training as you go along and um, that's something I've been using for the last month and I'm going to feed back on on how that's been on another video later on um, but that's something you know the big question I have is whether or not people would ever really uh, trust a watch or a computer to set a training plan say you know would you train for your next marathon and just follow exactly what the training plan for this watch tells you. Um, I've never quite been brave enough to do that. You know, when you're when you're chasing a, a big target or you're going for a, a, a time, it feels like a lot of your life to give over to something that may or may not work. But <clears throat> one thing I will say is these things are getting smarter and smarter all the time. So um, I don't think it's going to be long before we get to a point where you know it can not only just look at your sort of diagnostics, your biometrics from heart rate to pace to cadence and all those things and assess your fitness. Um, but it will also take in some of the more subjective feedback so you'll be able to tell it how you feel um, How you feel after a run how you feel in the morning, you know picking up on things like whether you're tired um, And fatigued on different on different levels that are maybe a little bit more emotional than they are um, sort of uh, statistically and that's one of the things so Another another big thing is I've got you can't quite see it, it's down here on my foot, but I've um, Picked up something called a stride now stride is essentially a foot pod you strap onto your laces um, much like you would a race timing chip and what stride is doing essentially in a nutshell is bringing the idea of power to running so cyclists have been using power for quite some time to enable them to perform at a consistent level and train at a consistent level so what does that mean so it, it will basically measure your wattage your output and it enables you to maintain the same output regardless of the of the kind of incline or terrain or conditions around you so think about this in a running environment you know you're in a marathon that's fairly flat and you're doing your pace of uh, eight minute miles and all of a sudden you hit a hill if you maintain that pace of eight minute miles you're going to be far more um, uh, overworked than you would be if you kick back so what the wattage and what stride can do is help you to, to, to rock back and retain a consistent power level. So when you hit those hills, you're not pushing over certain thresholds. In theory, that should mean that you can maintain a, a, a more consistent effort level throughout your run and run just below, below those thresholds that, that essentially kind of stop you stop you busting and, and, and ruining that, that PB attempt. That's a very simplistic way of putting it and I'm gonna be diving into an awful lot more detail about what else stride can do from kind of uh, cadence and and general kind of um, running form metrics that it'll also offer. But in a nutshell, that's what, what Stride are gonna bring to the game and what they're calling a, a running power revolution. And I'm really excited to, to, to see how it works for me because I know that I've been in races where I've gone too hard over kind of hidden inclines. I just came back from Hamburg. Um, it's one of those races, you know, Hamburg, I didn't get a PB, so everyone will say this is a big excuse, but Hamburg is double the uh, elevation of London. You know, these are not, hilly marathons by any stretch of the imagination but all of that incline is hidden you don't see it it feels flat so essentially you can run harder than you think you are um, without really realizing it. and I believe that stride may have uh, helped me run a more even race and, and achieved a better time off the back of that so that's a another trend the final one I wanted to talk about were lots of insoles in, in shoes that we're going to be seeing um, there's there's a product that's coming my way called Arian and this is an insole that slots inside of a shoe and looks at how your feet contact with the ground when you're running. So it can discover whether you're a forefoot, midfoot, heel foot striker. Uh, it can pick up on all kinds of other running form metrics that, um, that may be influencing how effectively and how efficiently that you run. And Arian are not the only um, people who are gonna be doing this. I've just been uh, responding to an email that I've had through from another company called RunV. Um, these are a Berlin-based kind of startup that are going to be arriving on Kickstarter too soon who are also looking at 
shoe inserts basically that will help read our runs and help us um, with our form and efficiency. So that's another thing that, that's coming the way. The benefit, I guess, of having an insole rather than the old school kind of chips in shoes and things that we saw from the likes of Nike back in the day is that these can be taken out and put into uh, various different shoes. You don't have to be uh, replacing your shoes every time you want to change something up. Um, so it's, it's really a fascinating time to be, uh, to be looking at running tech. And uh, I hope to be bringing you more updates on all of these things and more detailed reviews uh, as I've tested them. But yeah, that's it for now. From the Thames and some ducks and a couple of trains, uh, that's it from me. Cheers, guys.